In jawless fish, like lamprey and hagfish, we see the first forms of locomotion, simple undulatory movements. This is due mainly to lateral fins and the presence of a structure called the notochord. Next, we begin to see the development of cartilage, giving rise to the first fin. This type of fin is commonly seen in sharks. They have structures in the fin that are homologous to the humerus, radius, and ulna in us, but lack anywhere near the same type of movement. In later forms of actinopterygian and sarcoopterygian fish, we see another type of fin evolve, composed of bone. This fin, more complex than the last, allows for more flexibility of the wrist. In addition, the development of another bone in the neck, known as the atlas, which allows for a nodding motion of the head, allowed the famous tick to alec to emerge onto land and gave rise to the tetrapod era. The theory for why animals decided to transition onto land is still being debated, but scientists have provided multiple theories, such as a nutritious source of food just a few feet away from where a pool of water meets land, or overpopulation in the resident pool, and in an attempt to reach another pool, this primitive organism came to shore and crossed land. Amphibians were some of the first creatures to venture onto land, and with this transition came changes in their physiology. Specific to locomotion, changes in the pelvic and pectoral girdle were critical to successful adaption. In the pectoral girdle, loss of connection between the skull and pectoral girdle through the loss of extrascapular, post-temporal, and subcarethum bones allowed for independent movement of the head. Enlargement of the scapular coracoid made for better movement of the limbs and muscle insertion. Changes in the reptilians, which we evolved from, were seen in the endochondral elements, which became more large and prominent. Also, the scapula which forms an amnios today acquired a somite-derived portion, which now forms the shoulder blade. The continued loss of ventral elements and repositioning of the tibia and fibula as well as radius and ulna is what can be equated to change in stance. The pelvic girdle became the weight-bearing structure in organisms. Through the evolution of the ischium, which mid-ventrally connects the two sides of the girdle, and ilium, which connects the vertebral column to the girdle. Changes to the acetabellum, shifting laterally on the pelvis, changed the orientation of limbs, and with parallelism throughout the limb, led to change in dominance for locomotion from fore to hind limb. Strength in high limb encourages evolution of upright posture and bipedalism. Those major changes were seen most specifically in the sacrum and ilium, as well as in the overall configuration and orientation of the pelvic bones. Changes in the sacrum, like expansion, were extremely important for erect posture, providing a system of support for the viscera or organs contained in the thoracic region. The hominid sacrum is also positioned differently, tilting forward supporting the convex curve of the lumbar spine. This curvature combined with the concave curvature of the thoracic spine keeps the center of gravity of the torso directly over the pelvis. These changes in the sacrum facilitate standing on two legs. From reptiles with scales came the emergence of feathers. It is theorized that the transition from scales to feathers may have been a result of a mutation in the box set genes, including for placo development. In reptiles, mutation coding for scales caused cells to grow vertically outward instead of horizontally, producing something more like feathers. Modifications and further changes in gene expression and timing would, over time, show complex feather structures. It is not certain whether feathers evolved first for flight or if flight was a byproduct. Feathers could have merely provide insulation or for mating attraction displays, then flight could have come after. Considered by many to be the first bird is the Archaeopetrix fossil, which represents one of the first transitions between early reptile and bird-like species. It had the presence of feathers, but most likely could not fly using 